love you to a place of perfection so that when you appear before your father, there is nothing out of place. There is nothing that comes up short. There is nothing lacking. Wow. He tells the church we're supposed to love like that. In fact, Jesus sums up all the law and the prophets in simply this. Love the Lord your God first with all of your mind, all of your soul, and all of your strength. And love, the, love your neighbor like you love yourself. Jesus gives this command and he says, if you'll do this, you'll, you'll satisfy all the law and the prophets. In fact, he gives them the physical, visible example when he goes to Calvary's cross, the ultimate washing. No matter what the flaws were in your personalities, no matter what the flaws were in our upbringing, no matter what sin we had committed or how we came short, Jesus says, I'm paying this debt that you ran up because I love you. And then he tells us, we're to love God first and love each other just like that. The same way that I have loved you, you need to love one another. Now that seems like a very difficult thing to do because sometimes people are just unlovely. Sometimes it's very hard to love other folk. Some folk are, are seemingly impossible to love, but not so if you are in Christ. Because if you're in Christ, then you understand that the same Jesus who died for you also died for them, for that unlovely person. And because God loves us so much, he now says, here's the mission that I'm putting you on. I'm putting you on an ambassadorship of love. I need you to go out and love each other just like I have loved you. And if you're already crucified with Christ, then you're not your own. When we would feel the, the anxiety of the task at hand, uh -uh, remember, we're crucified with Christ. He went to the cross and gave up his life. Are we giving up our lives? Are we surrendering our will for his will? Are we being willing to go through uncomfortable things so that we can honor a holy and living God? Are we willing to put our own lives at risk that we might accomplish the will of God in us? Is he living in each one of us this morning or this afternoon? Excuse me. I pray that he is. In fact, if you're already tuned in and you're watching Bible study with us, you're, you're watching this episode, I'm inclined to believe that you are. I want to encourage you, beloved, the same way that Paul is encouraging these Galatians. Count yourselves crucified with him. And you're going to find that before very long, he's going to supply the renewed strength that you need to keep on keeping on. If you just hold tight, he's going to provide you with what you need to remain steadfast and unmovable. Just think of what he paid. Just think of what he went through. And just know that he loves you more than you could ever imagine. That's motivation in and of itself. So when we think about our position, I'm with Christ. I'm crucified with him. We think about the power that God is for us because we're standing with his son. Then the only thing left is to focus on our practice. Every day, we need to acquaint ourselves with the practice of dying to self. It's not about me. The tasks that God puts to us. It's not about us. It's about loving our brother, loving God first with all of our mind, all of our soul, and all of our strength. And then about loving our neighbor like we love ourselves. If we'll do that, you'll see wars stop. If we will love with the love of God, you'll see aggression stop. Oh my goodness. If you love with the love that God gives us, you'll see violence stop. You'll find the strength to break addictions. You'll find the endurance to overcome every obstacle that life will throw. In fact, you'll also find absolute unrestrained joy that attends us, that becomes a never-ending never wellspring of life bubbling up within each one of us. 
the byproduct of joy, of knowing, God, today I walked with you. Today I did the things that you called me to do. There is a joy. Romans says, I'm persuaded that the sufferings of this present time aren't even worthy to be compared with the glory that God's going to reveal in us. Beloved, stand fast. Hang in there. Endure. God has a plan that is beyond belief. In fact, he's got a retirement plan that is out of this world. Yes, pun intended. <laughs> he's got a plan to abide with you forever and forever. He's got a plan to provide you with a home that's laid out in the middle of a city, four square, with streets paved with purest gold. We're called to meditate on those things. We're called to remember that's our inheritance that the Lord has laid up for us because of our union with Christ. It's worth it, beloved. It's worth it. So today, when you find yourself pressed, when you find yourself beset by challenges, as you strive to live a life that's pleasing and obedient to Christ, I want you to know that God will supply you with the power and the strength that you need to accomplish his plan. And then we won't be hypocrites, as, as they were called in, in this place, but we'll be children of the Most High God. When they first called the followers of Christ Christians, it was a derogatory term. It was a slang term that was offensive. You Christian it was someone who followed, pursued after Christ. Bless the Lord. What an honor it is to be called a Christian. 